Welcome back to Ask an Adaptive Writing Instructor. My name is Saver Papoli and I am the owner and founder of Hoof Falls and Foot Falls, which is an educational resource for instructors that are working in the equine assisted activities and therapies industry. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at question number two that was submitted to me by a fellow instructor. And this question I asked about a student who is in a wheelchair. Um, and has some limited mobility and limited strength in legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the question and then we'll talk about it. So I have a girl who's in a wheelchair and she can wiggle her feet, but to try to get the horse to go, another instructor has the volunteers and sidewalkers use her foot and help her physically squeeze the horse. Uh, my line of thinking is that can she really physically kick or squeeze the horse? Um, or is it something that she would not naturally do? She can wiggle her feet, but do we want the students learning how to do something for themselves that they probably won't be able to do independently without sidewalker support? Um, so good question. So in adaptive or therapeutic riding, a lot of times we do work with students that have limited range of mobility or limited strength in a limb or more than one limb. Um, so this is something that can come up quite frequently. Um, so again, um, just like a disclaimer on any of the questions I do, I've never seen this student in person. So all of the suggestions and thoughts and everything that I'm talking about here during this Q&A um, are just kind of line of thinking, troubleshooting type methodologies and may not be the best fit answer because I've never seen this student in person. So first thing that comes to mind would be um, what is this student's diagnosis? So why is she in a wheelchair and with her ability to wiggle her feet, does that mean that she can also wiggle her knees? Um, how much trunk control does she have? Um, is she able to sit independently on the horse or does she need physical support? Uh, how is she with verbal cues and reining and overall um, fine and gross motor skills? So those are some questions that um, I don't have the answers to that I would be wanting, wanting to know as an instructor if this were my student in the class. So there are some people who do teach um, riders to use their legs or hands or reins or whatever you want to do by doing um, kind of an insist, uh, assisted method. So having the sidewalkers um, squeeze the rider's legs into the side of the horse to help simulate that squeeze if, as if the student was doing it by themselves. Or maybe to help that student learn muscle memory on how that feels. Um, again, that can be a really good technique for a student depending on what the needs of that student are, what their ability is, where they want to progress. Um, so having volunteers help squeeze the leg into the horse can be a really good technique to use. Is it a good fit for every rider and the answer for everyone who has low strength or limited mobility? Not necessarily. If you do choose to have volunteers help squeeze the rider's legs into the side of the horse, um, that does take a lot of coordination. So, you know, have someone be in charge and maybe it's the volunteer that's on the left hand side of the horse and they do a countdown. Um, so three, two, one, squeeze so that both persons on the left and the right side are squeezing um, in synchrony so that the horse isn't getting alternating cues, which can cue for something else other than a walk on. Uh, so that is kind of line of thinking on if you're using volunteers for um, squeezing the legs. If this is a rider where you're wanting to have her progress towards independence and squeezing or wiggling her legs while she's mounted is not something that she's physically able to do, then you might need to adapt and use a different method for her to cue the horse to move on or um, bend or turn or whatever you're working on. One option could be that she uses mostly um, upper body and seat and verbal cues. So you work on refining the use of her seat to ask the horse to move forward or um, shifting her trunk and her seat weight to ask the horse to move forward and halt. Um, there's some really, really cool videos of Paralympians that do this um, and they use seat and upper legs and trunk um, to ask their horse to do various transitions, walk, trot, canter, you know, tons of different things. Um, the horse though has to be schooled to respond to seat and trunk 
shift of weight and pressure. So that's something that you need to make sure you have the right horse and also that your student is capable of um, understanding and performing that. And also that you as the instructor, you're going to have to really pay attention to um, what that student is doing with their seat and their upper body and how they're using their weight and seat cues uh, for that horse if that's the, the route that you choose to go. Um, if the student is a verbal student, you could maybe really work on verbal commands for her cueing the horse to go. Um, again, you would have to school the horse to make sure that that horse responds to verbal cues. Maybe they're paired with a seat um, or weight shift cue as well to help that horse move on. Um, and then another option too is that you could replace the rider's leg cues with two long dressage whip length style aids. Um, Again, like the other ones I mentioned before, this is something that might take some time to cue your horse to accept those aids and understand what those um, whips on either side mean and how to appropriate re appropriately react to those. Um, so it's not something that you could just, you know, give your student two dressage whips, one in either hand and expect it to go perfectly the first time. There's gonna be a lot of footwork beforehand that you need to do in order to school and train your horse so that they are a good partner for your student in order to be successful at this new method and asking the horse to move forward independently if they don't have um, use of their legs or they have very limited or weak use of their legs. Um, with the dressage whips, if a student is using those, a concern that would kind of come into my head with that is, um, is that student able to use the dressage whips as well as um, the use of the reins at the same time. So does that student have the physical coordination in order to put all those pieces together? Or is it maybe something where we wanna work on um, seat and weight and verbal cues first in addition to rein control and reining um, before we add in any type of dressage whips for leg cues? So those are just some things that ran through my brain as this instructor um, submitted this question. This was a really great question. Uh, feel free to comment if you've ever worked with a rider that has limited mobility or limited strength in the lower limbs. Again, this is something that really varies student to student. There's really no cut and dry answer. Having volunteers help with the squeeze or help assist is definitely an option. It's not a one size fits all solution. And it really depends on your horse, the ability level of your, your student, um, long-term goals, um, physical and cognitive ability, all of those things tied together. So. I hope that helps. Great question. If you have any questions that you would like to be answered in the Ask an Adaptive Riding Instructor um, series that's going on here, please feel free to email me at saber.p at hooffallsandfootfalls.com. Drop a comment here uh, if you're on the YouTube channel. On Facebook, you can put it in comments. You can also send me a message through Facebook Messenger, and I would absolutely love to feature your question.